Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27, and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wands. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to THT Threnody, a set of maps released in 2016 to observe the passing of Ty Halderman, founder of Team TNT and principal maintainer of the id Games archive from 1997 until his death in 2015. In other words, if your wad was uploaded to the archive during that time, you had Ty to thank for it. THT stands for Ty Halderman Tribute, or to honor Ty with his life and work informing the creative trajectory of the project. Fittingly, THT Threnody was made specifically for the Boom source port and borrows sound effects and textures from classic Team TNT projects. Many of its maps pay homage to Halderman's own level design, especially his TNT evolution contributions. The word Threnody can be defined as a lament for the dead, a mournful ode or elegy. The Ty Halderman tribute project can sometimes be a somber experience, but it also celebrates the life and work of a special man and poignantly displays just how deeply the ties of love and respect run in this community. So here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. On the quality side, the grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Difficulty grades go from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, I probably won't have the same ideas about what makes a great level as you do, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. Before we start, the rules are, we play on ultraviolence and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it, saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z Doom with compatibility set to strict. Now to the wad. Map 1, Irene. From project leader Chris Hansen comes a comfy, if rather uneventful, opener. Irene is a compact, earthy tech base that doesn't pose any threat whatsoever. Mentally prepare yourself because this wad is packed with secrets, 109 to be exact. That comes out to about 5.5 per map, or 1 every 5 minutes if you're playing at my pace. Don't get swatted by the surprise Hell Knight or bumble into zombie gunfire and you'll ace this one in no time flat. Grade C, difficulty E. Map 2. Rockage. This bemusing minimap isn't much to speak of. The first room gives off a bit of a Master Levels vibe with its floating boxes and odd texturing. You can beat this map half asleep. The whole thing is pretty much just shotgunning chaff enemies up close. The bit where the red key sinks into the ground making you chase after it is kind of fun, and I appreciate Joe Ilya channeling the spirit of evolution with these two fake wall secrets, though the second one is an eyesore and only gives you 10 armor bonuses. Weird. Rockage is a blip on this wad's radar. Grade D+, difficulty D-. Map 3, Chemical Facility. Paul Corfiatis is one of the most prolific of all Doom mappers. Credited with over 200 levels and best known for co-authoring the Megawad's Whispers of Satan and 2002 A Doom Odyssey. He's also an active composer and contributed four midis for THT, not including the title theme. So why hasn't his name been called on Dean of Doom before? Well, Chemical Facility represents the upper crust of Corfianus' work. The layout is user-friendly, the room is cleanly drawn and carefully lit, and the secrets helpful and abundant. In the context of THT Threnody, PCORF's tech base is the first map of substance, and its accessibility makes it an excellent momentum builder. But the unfortunate truth is, most Paul Corfianus maps are nowhere near as exciting or novel as this. He is committed to conventionality in almost every respect, and it's not easy to consume his work in large doses. Frankly, he's the only mapper I've played a lot of whose levels mostly bore or annoy me. Long story short, Chemical Facility is a good Paul Corfiatis map. Grade B, difficulty C-. Map 4, Manly Hatred. No fourth map of a Ty Halderman tribute project would be complete without a bit of warping around. Manly Hatred makes use of boom-exclusive silent teleport lines, which simulate room over room in the first building you walk into. First and second playthroughs of this map are likely to give you very different impressions, because there's a secret backdoor passage early on that nets you some nice equipment and lets you get the drop on the bad guys. Hansen's secrets are gratifying, his encounters fair and energetic, and Paul Corfiatis' nervous mashup of TNT Evolution music is a great tone setter. I wonder if you can name all the tracks he samples. Give Manly Hatred another shot if you found yourself confused first time round. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 5, Nuke Evil. Take a deep breath and make like a bat out of hell, because Nuke Evil does not screw around. This is the kind of map I take an immediate liking to. Doom Kid doesn't wait to hand you the big guns, going so far as to place a BFG in Map Freakin' 5, nor does he play patty cake with monster placements. Arachnatrons, Chain Gunners, Revenants, Mancubi, and Hell Knights assail you from the start, with three archfiles shoring up the ranks in the second half. With its precarious footing and high enemy density, the outdoor cage fight is an onslaught when approached directly. 
especially since you can't get back out without the red key. No shame in taking things slow here. With all the keys in hand, you should have the hardware to plow through the rest with brute force, pop a secret and vulnerability to fully relish the jib-tastic final stretch. Nuke Evil is radioactive. Definitely one of my favorite Doom Kid maps. Grade A-, minus, difficulty B+. Plus. Map 6, Cutthroat. Cutthroat isn't quite as badass as advertised. The early rocket launcher fight in the vine-covered courtyard has plenty of zip on it, but the rest of the map is more stop and go. The archfile appearances are more of a time sink than cause for alarm, and the comparatively closed layout leads to more corridor shooting than running and gunning. The marble room at the end is particularly awkward. It leaves you to painstakingly snipe everything or start some infighting, try not to fall in the lava hitting all these switches, and then get out before you get caught in the crossfire. Either way, this room is kind of a clunker. Cutthroat is a hodgepodge of visual themes, occasionally reminding me of a peppier, E2M4, and it goes out on a pretty anticlimactic BFG splurge. Overall, it feels a bit deflated compared to Nuke Evil, but that's more a compliment to the latter than a knock on the former. Grade B-, difficulty B. Map 7, Fort Halderman. This massive midnight tech base is cut from the same cloth as TNT Evolution, giving off notes of hangar, crater, and especially nukage processing. The high monster count and prodigious acreage might scare off some, but the enemy density is low and imps and zombies make up the majority of the enemy garrison. Fort Halderman's old-fashioned secrets stash random monsters and equipment in fairly obscure locations. Check behind this altar to unlock the rocket launcher. It makes the map's marquee fight a heck of a lot more enjoyable. Like map 4, Fort Halderman gives Boom a starring role in the form of this conveyor belt assault. For evolution homers like myself, this map is a real treat, but I think there's something here for everyone. Footnote, this map is absolutely bonkers on multiplayer. See for yourself. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 8, Fight Nanchal Crisis at Enron. Fight Nanchal Crisis at N wrong. That's one of the worst puns of all time. I love it. Is Dobu Gabumaro even capable of making a boring map? I don't think so. Fight Natural Crisis at N wrong is a lot of things, but Forgettable is not one of them. Hysterically over-detailed and over-decorated from the first room, Enrong evolves into a labyrinthine funhouse that's almost as fascinating as it is disorienting. Every new set piece is zanier than the last. The map is gorged with sights, secrets, and things to do, but it's not immediately apparent which of those things are mandatory, and there's no instruction manual for getting them done. This is a perfect example of why I play maps twice before I review them. Fight Natural Crisis at Enrong makes an exasperating first impression. It body slams the whole wad's pacing and practically screams for attention. I mean, I still think and wrong derails the wad to some extent. It's hopelessly strange and its gameplay is ungainly at worst and unconventional at best. I started recording for this map expecting to hate it like I did the first time I played it, but for whatever reason I just didn't. Dobu Gabu Maru somehow bundles irreverence, puzzles, humor, and even social commentary into a single map, and I'd be remiss to dock at points for having a dummy filter. Fight Natural Crisis at N Wrong bursts with personality. It's experimental and audacious. Grade A minus, difficulty C plus. Map 9, Forgotten Reaches. Forgotten Reaches is a bitter pill for me to swallow. Made by a mapper I respect, but also downbeat, hostile, and flawed. It's the moodiest map in the WAD so far, with its low lighting and sinister locales calling to mind Evolution's midsection. Also like Evolution, it's maddeningly inconsistent. The opening minutes make you scrape by with a chain gun and budget crumbs of health, but the map's second leg loads you with power-ups and plasma, capping off on a BFG fest It's all but a foregone conclusion. All along the line, you're overfed bullets and underfed shells. Despite the initial frustration it caused me, the Cyber Demon Library ended up being my favorite room in this map. It's the only time I felt on even terms with the opposition. This cage room represents everything wrong with Forgotten Reaches. It's too dark, you can't rush through it, and there's not much joy in finishing it. Grade C, difficulty B+. Map 10, Fomal Hout. And then along came Mechadon. Fomal Hout is one of the mightiest maps on one of the mightiest resumes in Doom mapping. It's an intricately wrought astral epic with enough thrills per minute to keep you glued to your seat for nearly an hour. Home to almost four digits worth of demons, this supergiant is graceful for its size, owing partly to its linearity, by Mechadon standards, and its author's tightly directed fight choreography. Except for the custom sky, all the textures are straight out of Doom 2, which completely blows my mind. The burnished interiors invite comparisons to Back to Saturn X, and the sprawling caves embedded with hellish monuments practically pulse with foreboding. Few maps can match Fomalhaut's sheer drama, like receding shorelines before tsunamis. Quiet moments in this map only ever mean one thing. Start running.
won't spoil how to acquire the BFG, but you can get it early and you'll want to, because the plasma rifle simply does not suffice when the slavering armies of hell awaken from their slumber. An immortal map always needs a midi to match it, and I can't think of enough good things to say about this one. Alfonso's Gutter Penny possesses a chameleon quality that fits into the ebb and flow of every encounter. It permeates the very environment, fills the darkness with drips and echoes, beats along to your heart in the heat of the fight. Fomal Hount is the keystone of THT Threnody, an intrepid ride into the unknown, and a humbling tribute to the man himself. Ty would have been proud to have inspired a work as magnificent as this. Grade A+, difficulty B+. Map 11, Parallel Dimension. You know what that means. The first of two wormhole tributes in this map set, Antares 031's Parallel Dimension is a richly detailed outing dedicated to earning its gimmick. This worm column, if you will, bounces the player back and forth between starry tech base and musty medieval keep, neither particularly more difficult to handle than the other. The archvile placements will keep you on your toes, the pain elemental count is borderline excessive, but Antares never deprives you of ammo, and the fake wall auto map secret is both a nice TNTism and a helpful power-up finder. This devilish exit fake out drops you into a coverless voidscape firing squad. Definitely my pick for the most memorable scrap on the map. Parallel Dimension patents a style that Antares would fully embrace in 2018's Struggle and Teresian Legacy. He even used this midi for one of its levels. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 12, Worm Hell. Ah, oh, Worm Hell. I wanted to love you, but you wouldn't let me. For better or worse, probably worse, Worm Hell is the one map you'll remember from THT Threnody. It's a never-ending quagmire of references, rogue ideas, haunting sights, and agonizing fights. Now, Zock and Fonzie's combined technical know-how can't be disputed. Worm Hell pulls off almost every boom trick worth implementing, including deep water effects, teleporting items, silent teleporters stitching together environments and warping you between worlds, and who can forget the Mancubus conveyor belt? The amount of detail here is insane, from the copious visual references to TNT's map 4, and 19, to the many nifty bits of sector art, like these fallen grates in this auto repair shop. Sadly, all the creativity in the world couldn't save this map from its own bloat. Worm Hell is a triple-decker interplanar odyssey that will take first-time players upwards of two hours to finish. Wading between the three realities you'll endure combat, I would go so far as to label depressing. A grim carousel of cheap teleport ambushes, sniping chain gunners in the open, fidgety arch files, excessive pain elementals, and what the f*** is the point of this crusher? The cramped Cyber Demon Garage fight can suck on a tailpipe. It might be the low point of the wad for me. Thankfully, it's a one-off, but you can expect the author's other sadistic ideas to get increasingly aggressive reduxes later on. The ending throws two more Scybies at you, backed up by a double-barreled monster spawner that you have no means of turning off. The cherry on top is you can't return from the hellish dimension once you warp there except through the teeth of said monster spawners. I hate playing this map, but the fact is it still somehow manages to take my breath away. This cemetery sends chills up my spine, the Thai tribute and this little memorial service are moving, and the Death Spells remix mesmerizes. Wormhell doesn't want for inspiration or motivation to realize its bevy of ideas, but the end result is a disaster area. Grade D. Difficulty A. Map 13, Binda Haldetmand Palais. Did you mean Biden Haldeman Palace? I've never been so relieved to see Paul Corfiatis. His modest medieval jaunt is a welcome mid-wad wind-down. Apart from this peasant's revolt in the first few minutes, there isn't much to be afraid of here, especially if you duck in this secret for a rocket launcher. Groovy. Health and ammo aren't exactly plentiful, but that's par for the corf. See what I did there? Don't involve yourself in domestic disputes between demons, get your money's worth out of the secret berserk if you can find it, and this one will be over in a jiff. Grade B-? minus. Difficulty C. Map 14, Labor of Despair. Aptly titled, unfortunately, this map is a pain in the behind. Liberation obviously spent a lot of time perfecting the bloody hell out of his scenery, but did there need to be so much of it? For its relatively low monster count, Labor of Despair seriously drags. I always feel like I'm being kept at arm's length from the action. The perched enemies are a chore to chip away at, and the map is so open that meandering projectiles can always catch you by surprise. Ammo scarcity is a problem, and you'll definitely want to find a big effin' gun for the final shindig. An Olympic-sized field of slaughter with a smattering of grunts, two Cybees, and an archfire. Keep calm and BFG. Since this is a boom thing, I guess one map in this set had to do it, but let's get real. Nobody likes friction effects. I guess you could say Labor of Despair is not my cup of tea. Sorry for all the British jokes, I couldn't resist. Where I'm from, we don't spell labor that way. Grade C-, minus, difficulty B. Map 15, TIE 4515. With its medieval aesthetic, 
boppy, remixed soundtrack and a name Elon Musk might be considering for his next child, Tie 4515 is quite the mixed bag. The map's opening minutes are its most confusing and least exciting, but the environment merits a little dead time to run around exploring it. I suggest ignoring the optional non-secret plasma rifle and rocket launcher if you want to make the map more interesting. The SSG will cover most of your needs, and the rooftop fight at the end is a joke if you're packing weapons 5 and 6. Tie 4515's eclecticism works in its favor. It's handsome, autumnal, and goes down easy. Grade B+, difficulty C. Map 16, Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca would fit comfortably into Alien Vendetta's first episode, with its familiar balance of incidental combat and heart-pounding ambushes, and its marriage of old world and new technology. Like so many maps from classic megawads, Ayahuasca's secrets are the key to disarming it. You can find a BFG in the first five minutes, which will castrate this pesky cyberdemon and obliterate these two archviles in their honor guard near the end. I don't love the poison blood section, but if a two-minute inconvenience is the map's only weak point, it's a good one. Ayahuasca is polished, moody, and entertaining, and the optional content makes replays more fun than you'd expect. It's definitely the highlight of project leader Chris Hansen's contributions. Grade B+, difficulty B. Map 17, Tai Vivek. This Babylonian horror show is downright unpleasant. Right from the start, it's shotgunners tucked around corners, sniping arachnotrons nagging you long distance, and packs of revenant missiles hot on your heels. Ty Vivek's aesthetic isn't bad exactly, but Angry Saint never met a 90 degree angle he didn't like, which gives the architecture a slightly stilted quality when it's not draped in vines. Be sure to visit all four of the main buildings connected by bridges because they contain switches that unlock keys housed within each other. Hooray for backtracking. The sole moment of relief from this map's cumbersome runaround is the blue key arena, which I find fun mainly because I never get tired of watching cyberdemons kill things. Do not overlook the secret BFG in this room, or this coverless ziggurat fight with 16 revenants and a pair of archviles will flambe you, and the final ambush in the hanging gardens is even worse. Sounds BFG, it comes off as an emphatic go f yourself, and even done as intended, it's supremely unfriendly and awkward. Grade D, difficulty B+. Map 18, Fallen Steward Eternal Archive. Mithrin Denizen marches to the beat of a different drummer, opening his map on a rocket launcher-only battle with the Spider Queen and her entourage. The strobing lava and blocky texturing are a stark departure from what's come before, but it's hard not to enjoy the madcap action. Tell Mama Spider about the rabbits for the final time, and you're halfway done with the map already. The library stage, which I assume is a symbolic stand-in for the id game's archive, can easily be tamed with a hail fire of rockets and a surplus of power-ups. It's hard to dislike a map as determinedly unconventional as Fallen Steward Eternal Archive. Grade B minus, difficulty C. Map 19. Big freaking guardians. This wacky scrap brain science experiment has more than a few screws loose, but I would expect nothing less from the minds behind TIE 4515 and Wormhell. Sorry, Fonzie, but Big Freaking Guardians was my second most dreaded map to revisit behind well, your other one. The action is relentless, taxing, and inevitably strung out over more than an hour. The especially hostile beginning forces you to forage for ammo and fight for every worthwhile weapon while fending off gangs of revenants and hit scanners and ducking archfile flames. Just like Wormhell, Big Freaking Guardians ratchets the archfile count up to 21 on ultraviolence. As much as I respect attention to detail, Big Freaking Guardians' chaotic blend of medieval and futuristic decorations gives me a migraine although that could be the Satriani midi in the background. The map's central conceit is not too subtly hinted at by the acronym its title makes. Solving a puzzle will unlock a certain superweapon right before the biggest fight in the map. Without spoiling it, all I can tell you is it pays to be a bookworm. Without the BFG, this messy teleport ambush is not fun at all, and the map just doesn't know when to quit after that. Imagination can't redeem this one. Grade B+, difficulty A. Map 20, Sky Pillar. At the time of his death, Ty Halderman's custom title on Doomworld was, and still remains, essential pillar of the community. Antares outdid himself with his stately closer. Sky Pillar balances its brooding, elegiac soundtrack with combat that asks and gives no quarter. By the time you're finished here, the twilight castle grounds will be drenched in the blood of your enemies. A shame to befoul such a beautiful place but a greater shame to let the general go unavenged. Do yourself a favor and find the secret BFG. The second half of the map approaches X-tier difficulty without it. Telefragging this annoying cyber sniper kicks off a furious firefight. The view here is so pretty it makes my computer weep. Antares is always game for a fireworks show, and his blue key and sky pillar fights bring down the house. Set against Eris Falling's soulful interpretation of Evolution's intermission music, this is about as cathartic a finale as the THT folks could have possibly come up with. When you're ready to go home, Climb aboard the Sky Pillar. Grade A, difficulty A minus. <sighs> Ty Halderman has been called the longest lasting member of the Doom community. At the age of 47, he became a Doom fan for life, and by all accounts, he did more to keep this game alive than most. 
Thankfully, the community was able to honor him with an ESPY Award for Lifetime Achievement in 2014. Ty's passing is a solemn reminder that age and obsolescence will overtake us all, and for those who still regularly play this nearly three decades old game, that can be an especially hard fact to wrap the brain around. Though THT Threnody doesn't quite engage with that level of existentialism, its highs are heady, and the majority of its maps are obvious labors of love. Appreciated as its sentiment is, THT is self-indulgent, frustrating, and amateurish in its worst moments, but then that's just how community projects are sometimes. My final grade for this exceptionally unique map set is a B. Difficulty-wise, Threnody has its ups and downs, but it feels right to settle on a B-, ironically on par with Plutonia. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian, Map 10, Fomalhaut. Salutatorian, Map 20, Sky Pillar. Class President, Map 12, Worm Hell. And the dunce cap goes to, very regrettably, Map 12, Worm Hell. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the wad down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. A.R. Aaron Allen Aaron Berger Akali Alec Wehrman Alexander Sumankoff Alex Topfer Alex Max Alpha Skeeter Arya Dare Builder Sith Kappa Bitch Cheese Wheel Chris Duthat Chris O'Neill Christopher Hart Christophine Place, Kiara P, Crafty One Cal, Dan, Delirium, Doom for Dummies, Dorothy Miller, Eggboy, Ember, Emma Essex, Enraged Eggplant, Felix Wilson, Final Brett, Furnace, Gabagool, Garu Dave, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Griffin Upchurch, Gus Shade, Holy Hell Revealed When, In Captivity, Jared C. Bly, Jesse Taylor, Josh Ballard, Just Great 98, Camille Bernadotte, Killplane, Leon Staten, Logan Lazalda, Mark Rowland, Marky Music, Master Drew 117, Matthew Gower, Michael Gutierrez, Mixer, MK2021, Mr. Bob Syndiquil, Myolden, Neurometry, Nick Machado, Knights 108, Number 26, One True Purple, Orion Burke Pool, Painful Hill 72, Procrastination, Pyro She, Randy A, Roadworks, Rune, Sega Monkey, Shakes 999, Sid Menon, Spinner 8, Stone Mason, Stupid Nick, Tara Kishino, The Bell Tolls, TJG 1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, and Why Bemo Not a Crab. Thank you. I appreciate you all. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Dean of Doom.